This is the You, Me, and BTC podcast. Cryptocurrency decrypted. Welcome to episode 101. First up today, we're joined by Mr. Drew Phillips from Bitcoin Not Bombs. The organization has partnered with Antiwar.com to run a pro-peace haiku contest with tons of prizes. Drew will share the reason for the contest, how to enter, who's involved, and much more. Then after that, we'll chat about a fundraiser going on for Pro Tip. Chris Ellis has developed a Raspberry Pi-based Bitcoin full node that he's currently selling to raise money for the decentralized tipping platform. We'll cover the specifics of Pro Tip, this full node, and more. Today's hosts are Tim Baker and myself, Daniel Brown. Here we go. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the You, Me, and BTC podcast. This will be episode 101. This is our second triple-digit episode, so we are glad to be here. I am Daniel Brown, and I'm here with... Timothy Baker. And we also have another super special guest. We've had him... Super duper special. <laughs> We've had him at least once before, maybe twice, I'm actually not sure. But this is the Drew Phillips from Bitcoin Not Bombs. Thanks a lot for joining us, Drew. Hey, thanks for having me on your second triple digit episode. <laughs> yeah, special. It's a very special opportunity for our very, very special, special. I don't know how many times Daniel's going to get into it, but. <laughs> I'm not that kind of special. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason we wanted to have Drew with us, uh, we mentioned this, I guess, two weeks ago. Bitcoin Not Bombs is kind of working together with antiwar.com, and they have put together a pro piece haiku contest or an anti-war haiku contest and i guess we just we want to get the details we want to know what it's all about who's involved in everything and yeah share it with everybody and hope that they'll get involved so i guess we'll start there drew can you just tell us about the contest sure uh and thanks for the opportunity for that i i guess maybe maybe it'd be prudent to explain why we would do something like this yeah absolutely and yeah if if you follow anti-war on social media or, or if you go to their web page you know daily or weekly it's it's a lot of doom and gloom you know there's a lot of terrible news in the world and and we're sort of you know perpetual war so that can be fairly daunting and as a supporter of anti-war it, it becomes taxing to continuously read this type of stuff and it's the holidays right like this is supposed to be a time of reflection and hope and instead what we get is you know, war with Syria, what we get is, you know, the uh, the terrorist attacks in Paris and sort of more beating of war drums. And uh, and so we wanted to do something with a little more of a positive spin. And we wanted to encourage, you know, people to be more, to participate more in sort of the anti-war community and really help build that community. So we thought this would be a sort of a fun way to get people to get involved and to, and to participate and to share, you know, a more positive uh, take on on the world and why. You know, I, I, I'm of the belief that, that, that most average Americans and even average, you know, citizens of this world are, are anti-war people, you know, are not, are not oh, really yeah. going along. Yeah, you know, it's, it's really the media and the military and, you know, the industrial complex and the government and these institutions that are so, the supporters of war, the profiteers of war, where your average working Joe can tell you that this is not worth it. The damage and the cost and, and the lives spent on uh, these military uh, spending around the world is, is absolutely not worth it. And so, you know, we just wanted to give people a chance to you know, do something positive as opposed to you know, just sort of reading on about, you know, the, the negative, how terrible things are in the world and, and this perpetual war state that we live in. So, yeah, similar, you know, you guys were supporting our contest we did, I don't know, say six months ago, where we did an anti-war or pro-peace meme contest. Yeah, and the, maybe one of the the problems with that was that there's a little bit of a barrier there to creating images, right? Not everyone has Photoshop skills. It's actually fairly easy to create a meme, but it takes a little bit of effort, right? So this is a little simpler. It takes a little bit of thought, 
you know, in your, in, in your day off, you know, to, to come up with a haiku, haikus aren't that easy. And, <laughs> you know, you got to put a little thought into it. But other than, other than that, once you have it, it's, it's fairly simple to just grab, you know, log into your Twitter account and send that out. You know, or of course, if you're not on Twitter, there's an email address that we're encouraging people to send them to. But to participate on social media that way and to, you know, just to send a positive message sort of back to the war machine and let people know that there are, you know, your average American, your average citizen of the world is not for all of this military action that's going on. And so, uh, yeah, so we just thought it would be a good sort of fun, positive spin for the holiday season. Anti-war is in its winter fundraising drive. And that can get old, too, you know, asking people to donate. It's certainly important and you know, there's no such thing as uh, government subsidies for, for anti-war organizations. And even <laughs> if there were, it'd be unlibertarian of us to take that kind of money. But so it, it, can, it can get old asking people to donate. And so there are, there are other ways to support antiwar.com. And this is one of them to just get involved on social media and to just have your voice heard and to, to sort of add, you know, add your voice back to what we hear in the media and this constant droning of, of the war drums. So, uh, that's kind of why we decided to do the contest. The timing, of course, is, is the holiday season. And, and like I said, this is, this is the time for reflection and hope, not the time for, you know, this sort of fear mongering that's going on right now. I gotta say, it's a really interesting comment that, you know, that the average Joe is not for this. And it's pretty clear and common to think that war is a bad thing. And, and that's, I don't know. I just think it's interesting because even within the past few days, I don't know. I was thinking about some libertarian stuff and some different things that people debate about and, and you know, rights and, and all kinds of stuff. And I remember thinking, like, you know, th these debates are, are good, whatever. Let's talk about them. But one thing that just about everybody agrees on is, please, let's stop killing each other. Like, we don't want this. That's just that that's never going away. No matter where your debates take you, you know, no matter what category of libertarians you put yourself in or, or whatever there's not very many people out there that are actually for war and i think it's a it's a good thing and a common thing for people to just say no please no stop killing each other so absolutely no i i think so and i think the media would have you believe otherwise i mean certainly there are people that that are very you know hateful and and do for for whatever reason think that war is necessary but yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm with you. I'm of the opinion that the majority is certainly sees the senselessness of this and uh, and doesn't think that this is a good use of government resources or, or uh, you know, our money, our time, uh, our, our, you know, children's lives, any of that. So, right. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's why we would do something like this. But, um, you know, maybe I could just give the rules. Yeah. and Yeah, definitely. Just tell us who's involved and what you got to do and all that stuff. Sure. So it's it's pretty simple. Uh, haiku is uh, well, you know. Uh, I'm sorry, John's not with us. He would disagree. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, the haiku purist. Yeah. So we're uh, we're pretty open, and I don't know. You you guys can tell me our, our haiku contest cliche now, and just like, does everybody do this? I wouldn't know. Well, I don't. I honestly, we mentioned this a bit last week or whatever. I, I don't. I've seen people post haikus on Twitter, but I, I've never actually seen a contest before. And, and I'm, I'm sure it's to some extent, maybe I'm, I live under a rock and don't pay attention or something. But sure. it, uh, it, I guess, you know, it's not completely saturated. <laughs> right. So, um, well, just to give a shout out, uh, Marcella, who is a, a Ron Paul supporter, you know, in his uh, presidential run in 2008 uh, and in 12, they did something similar where it was haikus for Ron Paul. So, and they were very successful with it. And it wasn't a contest. It was just sort of a, an encouragement amongst his, uh, Ron Paul supporters to, uh, to send out, uh, haikus as to why you support, you know, Ron Paul and maybe sort of libertarianism in general or the ideas of liberty. And, and they said they had a lot of fun with it and, and kind of a good success and sort of a similar idea where it gave people something to participate in. So this is, she really sort of spearheaded the idea on the uh, liberty.me forums. And uh, that's that's where the idea kind of got rolling, and, and we talked about it for maybe a month before we decided to go ahead and do it. So uh, we decided to do it. It's a 30-day contest. We started on the 16th of November, and we'll conclude at midnight on the 16th of December. The rules are simple. You just create a haiku that is pro-peace. You're using pretty broad terms there. I mean, you, it can be about anything, really. The judges may be you know, persuaded one way or the other, depending on if your, your message is too negative. But 
you're welcome to submit whatever you like or whatever inspires you. And we are asking you to officially, you know, to email them in for official entry. And the email address is just antiwarhaiku at antiwar.com. Once you send it in, you're going to get a three free month membership to liberty.me. So thanks to liberty.me for offering that. Right. So uh, you send that in and then, and then we're encouraging people to post them on social media, Twitter or otherwise Uh, use the hashtag antiwarhaiku, same as the email so that we can see them and, and retweet them and, and look them up on, on the various social media feeds so that they'll get out there. Uh, we'll end up posting them on the blog, of course, once, once it's over, all the submissions, so people can, can look them over. But uh, we have a number of great prizes. I'll start with the runner-up prizes. Five runner-ups are going to receive a carabiner coffee mug and a 10 micro BTC Bitcoin card from Airbits. Airbits is a uh, mobile uh, Bitcoin wallet, so if you need a place to put your Bitcoins, they have a great wallet uh, app for that, and they're going to give. They have these cool carabiner coffee mugs and a, a card. Looks like a credit card, but it's loaded with 10 MBTC. So that's a great prize from them. And then uh, Purse.io, which is a uh, a Bitcoin shopping platform that helps you buy things on Amazon for as almost as uh, as good as a 20% discount when you shop with them. Purse.io. They're going to give five uh, sticker packs so they have some different various stickers uh, they'll give out to five runner-ups and then they they chip something into the uh, first place prize but i'll get to that in a moment all right and so then uh, students for liberty uh, is getting involved and just put a blog post up encouraging their network of students to uh, participate so if you don't know about students for liberty and you're a college student you should check them out because they have you know, a huge network and chapters on, I don't know if they're on every campus, but probably most of the main campuses around the country. So they're a great organization for sharing the ideas of, of liberty. And they have a book called Peace, Love, Liberty, and five runner-ups are going to receive a copy of that book. So that's a, a pretty cool prize. The next down is uh, CoinJabber. CoinJabber is a ratings and review site for the cryptocurrency community. So if you have a uh, a site that you had a really great experience with or you bought something from and you want to rate them, you can go over there and give them five stars. Or if you had a negative experience, you can go give them zero stars and write a nasty review to sort of <laughs> warn others. So coinjabber.com is the website. And they're, they didn't have any uh, T-shirts of their own. So um, they've got some, they bought from us some antiwar.com lapel pins. And we'll be giving five runner-ups a uh, anti-war lapel pin you may have seen. Just says antiwar.com. It's a nice little red, blue, and black uh, lapel pin design that we'll be sending out to five of the runner ups. Then one more we have um, the Free State Project is donating three uh, t shirts and stickers to three runner ups. So that kind of rounds them out. The Free State Project, if you don't know, is a, a, ge- a geopolitical movement to get 20,000 liberty minded people to move to New Hampshire to achieve liberty in our lifetime. And if you're not familiar with the Free State Project, check them out because they're making some really interesting headway, both on the political side of things and even uh, just activism in general in New Hampshire. It's, there's a, a high concentration of libertarian activists in the state, and so they're able to get a lot of neat things done. And then the top prize, so we got a lot of flack for this, I guess, but the top <laughs> prize is first place gets 0.5 Bitcoin, second prize gets 0.7 Bitcoin, and then third place gets 0.5 Bitcoin. And, you know, why did we do that? Well, you know, it's, it's five, seven, five. And somebody said, well, why would you give first place less than second place? Oh my gosh, that would be anarchy. Yeah. Can't have that. (laughs) Can't have that. So because, because we made up the rules, that's why. (laughs) So anyway, that the, the 1.7 Bitcoin total there was donated by Tim Fry of Roberts and Roberts brokerage, uh, who's been a longtime supporter of anti-war, a donor and advertiser. And uh, so he, he liked the idea of this contest and uh, was willing to put up, you know, he said, OK, I'll, I'll put up a Bitcoin or, or whatnot. And it was actually his idea. He said, why don't you do 0. 0.5, 0. 0.7, 0. 0.5? <laughs> and uh, that's a great idea. Let's just run with that. And uh, anyway, that drove the folks over at Purse.io mad. I mean, they just they couldn't get grasp it. So they actually donated uh, they donated a signed copy of Age of Cryptocurrency. So the first prize winner will receive more than just 0.5 they'll also <laughs> receive a signed copy of the age of cryptocurrency but those um you know 0. 0.5 0. 0.7 0. 0.5 what's bitcoin worth right now about two you know 370 360 maybe so uh you know that's uh, that's not an insignificant amount of money to uh, win first second or third 
And uh, everybody that I've talked to has said, okay, I'm going to uh, write my best haiku and then I'm going to take it down a notch just so I win second, <laughs> second, second place. Yeah, right? exactly. So. Exactly. Well, yeah, that's uh, there's a bunch of awesome stuff there just for coming up with a few lines and putting it on Twitter. So, yeah. So, I mean, with on top of the top three prizes, I think there's 28 prizes there. Dang. Runner up prizes. So we really wanted to get a lot of uh, entries and really you know encourage people to, to participate and uh, and I've gotten a, a number of, of great submissions to the email already. So you know we're collecting all those, and we'll publish them on the blog when when we get closer, or maybe after the contest is over, so everyone can see uh, what everybody sent in. But if you go to Twitter right now and just search for the hashtag anti war haiku, you're going to see just about all of them. Not everyone uses the hashtag, of course, but but we want you to, so people can see that, and so you know you can tag us uh, on Twitter at anti war com or. Bitcoin not bombs is fine, you know. Just get it out there and, and let your let your message be seen. And I think that I think it does send a strong signal that you know these are average everyday Americans. And, and uh, I hate to be a status like that and say Americans. These are average everyday <laughs> people of the world, right? Like you don't have to be in America to enter. You can you can enter from anywhere in the world. That's the, sort of the beauty of the internet, right? It, it sort of brings us all together, you know, in this sort of global platform. So. If you tweet it in a foreign language, I think Twitter will translate it and you can still enter. <laughs> so far, what kind of interest is coming up for all of this? Like, uh, are you seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of response? Yeah, I, I have seen a lot of tweets and so forth. And, and on the email, you know, I see all the haikus as they come in. Are you getting more haikus in or are you getting people just kind of like spreading it more or are you getting a nice balance there? I, so I suppose I'm getting more haikus than, than people helping spread the word. There's certainly a, a number of great Liberty media outlets that I reached out to that have been helping you guys, of yeah. course, Free Talk yeah. Live, The Crypto Show. Students for Liberty did a great blog post, you know, getting that out to their network. But yeah, I guess, I guess absolutely we would need more people to help spread the word because I suppose one thing that I've noticed is I do recognize a lot of these people from Twitter. So these are people that are, say, in the Liberty movement or in the Bitcoin community already. So yeah, how do we how do we reach your average J Joe that maybe doesn't read antiwar.com every day or doesn't know about Bitcoin, right? How do we reach uh, those people? And and that was again one reason why there's an email address is because not everyone's on Twitter, right? So anyone can participate. You know, hopefully everyone has an email, right? But so I don't know. That's it's a great question, and and um, you know maybe some people can help with that and help uh, tell people about about the contest and and link them to the blog and and the, you know this podcast and others. And we could get, you know, sort of, you know, we said that, that, that all these average J. Joes support peace and are anti-war, but do they realize there's a movement out there? Do they realize that there are organizations like antiwar.com that oh, yeah. chronicle, you know, this stuff and, and do the reporting and follow the, the news every day? So, yeah, I think that would be, uh, that would be something to work, work towards and uh, try to, to do better at. Yeah, we'll, we'll uh, get some contact info Right before we wrap up, and uh, I'm sure if, if anyone is interested in helping promote it or, or share it or anything, or if you have any crazy ideas, you can reach out to Drew or, or someone. But uh, I do want to say that at the very least, one thing you can do is, you know, get on Twitter and start retweeting. I mean, that's even easier than writing one is just find sure. one and, and retweet it or retweet three or four of them and, and just, you know, your favorites. And, and, and that'll help us know, too, when we see retweets or whoever's judging, you know, they'll, they'll see what was appreciated and stuff. So, yeah, that's definitely something we'll be looking at. You know, I, I, I thought I had half a thought to put that in the contest to say, you know, whoever gets the most retweets, but that's sort of hard to, to monitor, but, right. you know, but yeah, like I said, if, if you are on Twitter, just do a search for that, that hashtag and, you, and you'll see all of them and yeah, start tweeting your, uh, retweeting your favorites. It's, uh, I guess pretty easy to click that button, isn't it? Absolutely. Easier than writing one. I also should say, before we close, I was a little bit baffled today when I read this post. There's so many great people getting involved here. I mean, I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but for the for the meme contest, you know, there was three, four, five organizations that were given prizes and stuff. But here, I mean, you got Airbits, you got Purse, you got Students for Liberty, Coin Jabber, Free State Project. It's it's like pulling out all the stops, and I I think that's amazing. So. 
Uh, so I, I certainly contacted everybody in the book. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'm not afraid to ask people to support antiwar.com. They're a wonderful organization. I think that uh, libertarians, and not just libertarian organizations, but I think all, we should come together on sort of these simple issues that unify us all. And anti-war is, is unique in that way that it is run by libertarians. It, you know, we, we, they do have sort of these, these underlying principles, but they, they look at both sides of the spectrum. Uh, you know, you'll find columns on there from people like Pat Buchanan all the way to Noam Chomsky. Right. So this is sort of the issue that, that can unify, you know, people sort of all over the political spectrum. So yeah, I'm, I'm all about coalitions. I think that's important. And I think that, that we can come together and, you know, sure, maybe all these people sort of have a liberty bent. And maybe next time I should look to, to reach outside of those circles. But I think that it's important to, uh, to really get behind, you know, these issues that can unify us all. Yeah, definitely. And, and hopefully it, hopefully it makes a difference. I, I think it already has and it should. So that's great. Oh, oh, it, so it has achieved, you know, the goal, you know, right. Somebody still has to win at the end of the day and we get to give away these fabulous prizes, but we've already seen a flurry of, of haikus, you know, and messages and, and that, you know, people just, resonating with this idea and, and sending something in on Twitter. I mean, that's already a win for us. You know, and like I said at the beginning of the podcast, half of the reason we did it was because, you know, anti-war social media feeds are pretty doom and gloom. So it's nice to see something positive for a change. Yeah, I mean, it's always, I don't know how much it changes stuff, but I do like the fact that I mean, it gives people like an outlet for something to do to create something. I don't know, it's just nice for people to be able to express stuff like that too in kind of a, a uniform way, like a lot of people can express it the same way. But yeah, absolutely, and and you know, and we want to build a community. I mean, that's you know, like yeah. I said, an yeah. anti-war is in its fundraising drive. It gets old asking people to donate. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so we want we want to build a community, and we want to give people outlets beyond just hey, will you donate to this wonderful cause? And they're definitely a wonderful cause worth donating to. But you know, I don't want to take that away. But right, let's let's build a community. Let's have some fun while we're doing it, and uh, you know, let's express ourselves and. And send our signal, you know, our message back into the, the the drones of the mainstream media that just bang us with this constant negativity. Definitely. Where can everybody find you? Where can they contact you? Where can they send you love mail? Where they can. <laughs> so hate mail should go to trash. At, <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, never mind. Bitcoinnotbombs.com is the website. There's three different posts up there. I'm trying to update each week. So you can dig through there. Um, the email address again is antiwarhaiku at antiwar.com. I, I get those emails. And so even if it's not a haiku and you have an idea or want to help or, you know, you can, you can send an email to antiwarhaiku at antiwar.com or just find uh, all of antiwar's uh, social media accounts are antiwarcom. So it's kind of like dot com without the dot. So antiwarcom on Twitter and Facebook. Google Plus, and they we now have an Instagram account. So you know whatever that's worth. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, I hope everyone checks it out and gets involved. I hope you retweet. I hope you submit. I hope you wait around to see who the winners are and retweet those and tell other people about it. Definitely glad this is here and hope it goes well. Thanks a lot for being here with us, Drew. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me, and, and congratulations on your uh, your 100th episode. That's oh, great. yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you again. Are you tired of Bitcoin dice and ready for something different? Try Lucky Bit, the original falling coin game at luckybee.it. It's the most exciting Bitcoin game on the web. You can bet on five different payout lines and win up to 999 times your bet. You can even use their faucet to get some free Bitcoin. Dice is boring. Play different at LuckyBit. Check it out at LuckyBee.it. Okay, hey guys, welcome back to the You, Me, and BTC podcast. I am still Daniel Brown, and I'm still here with... I will forever be Timothy Baker. You can't be sure about that, Tim. No, but it sounds better than saying that I still am and haven't decided on a whim to change my legal name. Yeah, but you just said that you always will be, and you can't, you don't know that. 
I know, but this kind of thing, this whole like talking to people, entertaining them, Daniel, is all about lying to them and making you okay. seem like a different person. You know person. what? I can, I can agree with that. So <laughs> let's go. Let's go for it. Let's go. I will always be here for you, and I will always care about your problems, <laughs> even if it is that you left money into a, a wallet. <laughs> yeah, tweet Tim if you have problems. He'll, he'll fix them for you. I don't know how it works. I don't know either, man. You just got to find someone else. So today we have a, a pretty cool fundraiser that we want to chat about. And I'm glad I remembered to get it in here because the kind of the main event is going on this Saturday and we'll explain what that is in a moment. But this is, I guess, kind of headed up by Chris Ellis and it's a fundraiser for Pro Tip. And right now there's actually, I think there's going to be two crowdfunding campaigns. There might be one on Indiegogo by now. But we're just going to focus on the one on Start Join. I'm sure they're both basically the same thing. So I guess what we should start with is what Pro Tip is. Do you know what it is, Tim? Not exactly. I've, since we've started talking about it, looked it up on their Indiegogo campaign page that they started. And to their too long didn't read is pro tip is peer to peer crowdfunding. We're big funds of Patreon and Flatter, but we feel the commissions are too high and you are locked in the into the platform. So it looks like they're just trying to build a more decentralized way to kind of join together crowdfunding and have it cost less, which is what Bitcoin does. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's pretty much it, I think. We might have briefly touched on this before, and I know John has at least briefly touched on it in Bitcoin in the Arts. But yeah, yeah, that's a way to raise money for mainly for artists or like content creators. We actually have it integrated on our site. And the way it works is you get an extension for your browser, so like a Chrome extension, and it will scan every page you go to for a Bitcoin address, like a donation address. And then at the end of, I think like every week, it will calculate how much time you spent on each page with the Bitcoin address, and it will take your money that you want to donate, and it will divide it up based on those times. So if somebody is on our site for 10 minutes, and then they go to a different site for 10 minutes, then they can select, hey, I want to, I want to donate $5 a week to whatever content I'm consuming. And if they're giving five dollars a week, half of it's on our site, then we would get two fifty. And of course that's all done with Bitcoin. And it, it you know, it does it automatically. It's it is an actual Bitcoin wallet that you can send money to and send money from. And you just have all these extra settings where you can say this much per week and it keeps track and donates automatically. Does that make sense? Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I, I have heard at least let's talk about it, or I might have listened to John talk about it specifically. Yeah, so first of all, I'll say if you want to find out more, the web address is protip.is, P-R-O-T-I-P dot I-S. But we do also want to talk about this crowdfund, which is really interesting. The idea is that Chris Ellis is going to hand-assemble Bitcoin full nodes on air. He's going to broadcast this on Saturday, which will be December 5th. If you want to watch, if I remember to put a link in the show notes, I will, but I'm sure you can just Google it or whatever, or look it up on Start Join and look for Pro Tip, and you can watch on Saturday. He's going to hand build them probably for, for the better part of a day, maybe more, just kind of as, as a way to to show people what's going on. He He developed his own Linux image, I guess, kind of his own operating system with whatever programs he needs. It will include the Bitcoin client and a full copy of the blockchain. Oh, I guess I haven't even said it's it's all going to be built on the Raspberry Pi. So it's going to be nice and tiny, but it's it's going to work. It's going to be a full node. It'll have a case. It'll have a, a flash drive to store the blockchain on. And, and like I said, the image... I think it's pretty cool. Any thoughts, Tim? I mean, this is one of the few things that I actually do get fully behind. Not that I'm going to donate to it, but <laughs> the idea. Or I, might, I mean, I may donate to it if I can find one of the uh, 
the perks that I like. Which which part do you like? The full node or the pro tip? Specifically, pro tip and the idea behind that because I can see it working. Oh yeah, and it doesn't seem like it'd be that hard to implement. So I would definitely. Um, I'm interested. To see yeah, that. It. Yeah, that is a problem that a lot of people have tried to solve and are working on. Where you know people like John, he makes music all the time, but in today's age where you can just copy music nonstop, it's really hard to profit from that. And yeah, uh, theoretically, Pro Tip solves that. It, if the people are willing to use a system like Pro Tip and are willing to say, you know, 10 bucks a week, that's pretty cool. Especially once you build up a fan base, you know, if you have 20,000 fans, and even if their $10 gets divided up among 30 sites, uh, uh, the, I didn't pick some great numbers for math there, but, you know, that's that's a decent chunk. I mean, I, I guess it would must be at least like 10 or 20 bucks a week. Hey guys, coming to you in post-production here. Just wanted to mention that using my example numbers there, an artist's weekly income would actually be over six and a half grand. That's friggin' awesome. Let's get back to the show. Especially the more you grow, you can get 200 a week or something. And yeah, that I think it's a good idea. I, I hope it works out. It would be cool if people started to use it. And, and I guess the alternative is ads, and I think this would be better than ads, so. Yeah, well, I, they don't bother me that much, so it, it depends on the mood I'm in. <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I completely agree. We've We've had conversations like this before, and it's weird how I used to hate ads, but now that I I have them <laughs> and I need them to run you, me, and BTC, it, it's kind of a more like, oh, you know, he's they're trying to tell me about something. I might listen, I might not, but I get why it's going on and, and they don't bother me as much now. So, well, let's see. There's also, we should talk about the way he's assembling these. I'm not actually completely sure the reason behind this maybe it's just to be unique maybe it's to raise awareness for for what it's like to be a chinese factory worker not entirely sure but he's gonna be doing this under like simulated conditions of oh here of, of a foxconn factory worker in henan province of china so basically he's gonna be paying himself that factory worker's wage which is i don't know probably a couple bucks an hour. And I, I remember him mentioning that he his diet will be just tea and, I don't know, rice or something. I don't remember. But the idea is he's just going to simulate those kind of conditions, I, I guess, to raise awareness. I'm not 100% sure, but it, it definitely it's an interesting idea. It'll be cool to see him do it and see how it works out. Well, yeah, actually, and I guess another big idea behind this, I don't know if you picked up on this or not, but I guess this is supposed to be a ripoff of the 21 Bitcoin computer because that's, well, it's close. This product alone doesn't have the miner, which I guess is one of the core parts of the 21 Bitcoin computer. So that's, I guess it's not completely right. But what I remember him showing the other day, we, we were doing a, a blab together if it's some kind of video cast that i started doing on saturdays and he was mentioning that you can plug in a usb miner that will essentially make it the same as a 21 bitcoin computer it you know for 15 bucks you can get an ant miner and it, it will it'll get you a few cents or or whatever however often oh gosh tim the usb miner he had was it looked just like a flash drive and this is interesting because you remember our miner our butterfly labs miner do you remember how many giga hash per second that was no i don't no it, it was it was 30. 30 no okay and you know how big that thing was right yeah so now this little usb miner which looks like a flash drive has a hundred giga hash <laughs> <laughs> so that's interesting but yeah so i'm getting one of these it'll be fun to try even just for the Raspberry Pi 2, I, I've had a Raspberry Pi 1 for ages, and I, I want a second one. And it'll have the full node, which is something I've talked about before. I I mean, it's definitely important to have a ton of full nodes out there. That That's kind of what keeps... I mean, even if you're not... I mean, mining is great, and, and if you can mine, do it. 
But even if you're not mining, it helps to have a full node just to kind of divide things up more, to populate the network. Decreasing latency is actually one of the benefits of having more full nodes is it's just the more people there are to connect to, the faster you can connect to them, the faster data can get sent across the network. So I guess we should mention the perks, Tim. I, I mean, obviously the the perk, the main perk is is this, the the computer. But yeah, I guess I'll, you want to go through that and tell us what all the options are? This is their second round of crowdfunding. They did one, yeah, yeah I guess. Yeah, the Indiegogo one ended back, what would that be, seven months ago? So they're running another one now. But for the measly price of five GPB, or otherwise known as Great British, Great Britain Pound? I think Great Britain Pounds, yeah. Great Britain Pounds, yeah. You want to make a small token of appreciation, say thank you for the code as our developer Leo Campbell slugged away doing the work nobody else wanted to do like a boss. Well, now is your chance for the price of a fancy coffee at one of those global chain stores you can show your gratitude and get a shout out on Pro Tip HQ Twitter. So this is one of those, normally fundraisers have those, it's just they'll send you a shout out personally online and they'll make you feel good and then you get to tell everybody else, hey everybody, look. I donated money. It wasn't a lot because all it was is enough for someone to go on Twitter and do. But I still donated if you're that kind of person. Yeah. Another another quick thing that we should mention from that. I mean, maybe you guys guessed this, but they did say it's for the developer and for the coding. That is what this whole thing is for. It's for development and, and to continue coding pro tip. They say specifically it won't be for marketing or advertising or anything. This is specifically to develop and improve pro tips. So, next one is you get a t shirt and you're a beta tester. So, not only do you get first access to the new features in the app, but for this kind of money, we're going to send you a pro tip t shirt and give you a special Twitter badge viewable to anyone using the pro tip app. And this is for um, 25. Great British pounds. Yeah, actually, I'm looking up now. A Great Britain pound is worth pretty much exactly a dollar fifty. So add fifty percent to each of these perks to to get to dollars if you care. <laughs> then the next one, and this is for one hundred Great Britain pounds. Your personal Bitcoin full node. So this is a handmade Bitcoin full node by Chris Ellis. It's been made live on air. So I don't know exactly what that means. No, that, that's the thing on Saturday. He's going to assemble it while oh. broadcasting. How many is he going to say? Oh, it says 6 out of 20. So, okay. Product includes a fully installed Bitcoin full node, complete up-to-date copy of the blockchain installed on a Raspberry Pi 2 with 8 gigabyte SD card, 128 gigabytes external media and tone tech case. And the price includes shipping worldwide. For only $5 more, you can... Get the full node and then donate it to a part of the world currently underrepresented on the Bitcoin map if you're a philanthropist. Yeah, I guess seven people have so far donated nodes and only six of them actually got their own full nodes. So that's pretty cool. People are people want to give money to Pro Tip and they want to just generally support the Bitcoin network without getting anything. That's that's awesome. <laughs> then for the price of forty thousand Great British pounds. It's quite a bit of a jump here. But for that sum of money, it says you'll get a full node, all the VIP swag, and you'll get a dinner with the pro tape team in London. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're not expecting this. Their, their, their subtitle there is WTF exclamation point question mark. <laughs> but hey, if you want to do it, apparently it's an option. Yeah. So anyway, check this out. I, that, that is all the perks, and I haven't officially donated yet, but I am going to get a full node for myself because I'm a filthy, selfish person. And, filthy oh, actually, Chris also said that if you want any additions, any customizations, he mentions like a Wi-Fi card or VGA. I've actually asked him to include one of those USB miners, Tim, so I pretty much will have a 21 Bitcoin computer, probably not as powerful. I don't know what the gigahash is for the 21, but 
yeah, I'm excited to get this for a little for a little bit of extra cost, of course. Uh, and I talked that through with him, and he says contact him if you want to work out something like that. He is at Mr. Chris Ellis on Twitter, Mr. Chris Ellis, and he's been I you know. I've heard about him in the past, read about him, whatever, but I've just been starting to meet with him and talk with him over the past couple months. Pretty awesome guy. He's really, really concerned about educating people about Bitcoin, and he's not really in this stuff for profit. He he thinks it's great stuff that can change the world. He actually, somewhere on here, yeah, it says Chris Ellis, Chief Education Officer. So he's the CEO but he's not an executive officer. He's an education officer. And yeah, he, he's really got some great plans, some great initiatives. So check this out. This is actually startjoin.com slash pro tip. And we'll have a link in the show notes. This website, I've never seen it before now, but it, it is a kind of a crypto crowdfunding site. And you need Startcoin to actually use it which I'm not really sure why they don't take Bitcoin, but you can get Startcoin through Shapeshift, which I'm going to try out here pretty soon because, like I said, I'm about to donate for this full node. So, yeah, you uh, you can donate Bitcoin through Shapeshift, or he has an address for anonymous Bitcoin donations, or I think they did have a PayPal option, or maybe you already have Startcoin, but check it out, startjoin.com slash protip. Interested in Bitcoins or altcoins? Love chatting? We are the place for you. Bitcoin Talk Dot Club is a new form sensation coming to a computer near you. Whether you're a professional coin developer or someone that wants to know more, our doors are open for you. We are looking for people to join and help build this form into a one-stop knowledge base for everyone's needs. We're looking for you at BitcoinTalk.club. Join the club, join the club, join the BitcoinTalk.club. I'll actually make that my advice of the day is get over there and donate. Even if it is just five pounds, I'm sure they can use it and it's, it'll be helpful. But, you know, if you can afford a full node, try it out. It's It's like... It's less than half the price of a 21, even with the addition of the miner. So that's my advice. Go check it out. Any advice, Tim? Honestly, no. Tim's advice is don't give people advice because it makes you look like a stuck-up bastard. You said that last week or something. I'm pretty sure. No, no. We've said tons of similar things like don't take your own advice or like... Don't listen don't to people's don't advice. Don't take your own advice. I don't think you should be giving yourself advice. It sounds kind of No, I don't think we've ever said that you shouldn't give advice. We've said things about taking advice, but we've never said not to give advice. No, but you said take your own advice. I did not say take your own. You mean just now I said take yeah. your own? No, just now I said Tim's advice is to never give someone advice because it makes you know, look like a stuck-up bastard. During the conversation, you said taking your own advice anyway anything else before we close no not really no thanks for listening to episode 101 all of the music in today's show was from john stewart Remember to check out this week's show notes at you, me, and btc.com and leave us a comment. We'll see you next Thursday.